All right, we have more changes unfolding in the U.S. economy and the U.S. banking sector. Changes that have five more banks up against the clock as some new data just emerged, put out by a major investment bank that shows should rates stay at these levels and not fall into 2024, these, these banks could be kaput. We're going to show you why and how and this specific product that they offer which they're more exposed to than any other bank and we'll also cover the fallout from jackson hole and the coming cliff that most investors are walking blind toward but before we get started if you're not already a subscriber of this channel consider subscribing it helps the channel out and i appreciate your support so so let's start with what happened on Friday. Big Daddy Jerome Powell has spoken, and it's not what most big money investors wanted to hear. I think I said last week in a video that most hedge funds, financial media, want the Fed's policy of tightening to end, cheering on this no landing or soft landing scenario in an attempt to push off, delay any sell-off in the markets. We've been hearing all of them marching to the beat of the same drum for the last year, consistently saying that this is temporary, that the Fed will have to turn around, pivot, thinking, saying it, and constantly putting it out there in the world will force their will onto the Fed's policy, but it hasn't. And the sooner everyone comes to this realization, the better. All it's doing is dragging out the inevitable. There's a few lines that I want to play from Jerome Powell's speech that are important. Take a listen to this. Although inflation has moved down from its peak, a welcome development, it remains too high. We are prepared to raise rates further if appropriate. Beyond changes in interest rates, bank lending standards have tightened and loan growth has slowed sharply. But we are attentive to signs that the economy may not be cooling as expected. So far this year, GDP growth has come in above expectations. In addition, after decelerating sharply over the past 18 months, the housing sector is showing signs of picking back up and could warrant further tightening of monetary policy. The wide range of estimates of these lags suggest that there may be significant further drag in the pipeline. Now that last point, lending standards tightening, he said loan volume growth has fallen sharply, something that has yet to work fully its way through the system. What did he say actually that there may be significant further drag in the pipeline? We've been pointing that out since last year because it's a silent albatross around the neck of everyone, every business, every real estate investor, every personal borrower, and it doesn't happen right away it creeps up slowly bubbling up in c-suite corporate meetings realizing that their loan terms are changing or existing debt maturities are creeping closer and closer anxieties start to rise until eventually it just happens the loans reset and best case the company's profits are cut in half or worst case they default on their obligations and it starts to happen like dominoes one after the next this is all due to banks tightening lending standards meaning making it harder to get a loan, which means there is less money being created. Again, all part of the Fed's plan here, folks. They are trying to shrink the money supply right now. There's just too many dollars chasing too few goods. And one way you know, to get that back in balance is to get rid of some of the excess dollars that were created during these ridiculous stimulus packages over the last few years. And they've actually been doing that. Take a look at this, which is important for a variety of reasons the dark blue line is central bank liquidity or the size of the g3 balance sheets it's been falling for more than a year now but here's the thing central bank liquidity is highly correlated with asset prices more liquidity in the system the higher asset prices go less liquidity the lower they go the same applies with interest rates but with an inverse effect right high rates equal lower asset prices low rates equal high asset prices but one sector Hasn't gotten the message, folks. Look at the break in the spread between the NASDAQ and falling central bank liquidity. This is what a bubble looks like, folks. Clear as a bell that tech is not only overbought, but due for a massive correction. Look at it here. This is the Magnificent Seven, the top seven largest companies in the NASDAQ, which make up the majority of the gains, by the way, seen this year. This is what uh, Bank of America's chief investment strategist has to say. Nouveau bulls hoping no double top in Magnificent Seven. Well, it sure looks like a double top, doesn't it? And it's not just this. Take a look here. Global stocks versus the U.S. Look at how insanely over the previous peaks we are. This is what you call a high standard deviation well over the mean you can see during the internet bubble how far over global equities 
we were then the nifty 50 bubble back in the late 60s but nothing at all not even close compares to what we're seeing right now folks this is like the bubble of all bubbles here and if you remember michael burry the infamous investor bought mbs swaps during the run-up to the last housing market crash he made a boatload of money well he saw this same thing as well as uh, b of a six months ago or so and he went short but clearly did it too soon he had to stop out look this market's incredibly resilient so outright shorting just out of the question but i'd be careful if you're not hedged to the downside here's what b of a's chief investment strategist also wrote in his friday note but since debt ceiling resolution higher stocks now mean higher yields just as lower for longer rates and yields cause bubble and boom higher for longer rates and yields will cause pop and bust sell the last rate hike now he's probably the smartest of these big bank analysts and he's dead set on a sell the last rate hike position every tightening cycle following the last rate hike is a massive sell-off so keep that in mind and when's the last rate hike most likely either september or november like we've been saying the end of this year has just so many catalysts converging together bad catalysts by the way reasons why you don't want to be exposed going into now on top of that another one i was just made aware of are five more banks a few of which are already vulnerable were vulnerable for other reasons well check this out something you wouldn't normally think of as a vulnerability certificate of deposit rollovers now this won't have a direct effect on these banks but they will have tangential effects and for banks that are already treading water like a few of these already maxed out borrowing from the fed's emergency borrowing programs this is a problem take a listen to what morgan stanley says here's what they write for most banks the cost of adding new cds has reached five percent plus materially higher than the average rate on their existing deposits this means that even if the fed is done raising rates as existing cds mature and roll over the higher rate environment in the second half of this year should drive upward pressure on interest bearing deposit costs our team mapped out banks according to CD balances that are set to mature reprice in the next 12 months as a percent of total deposits. Now realize any of these banks with over 20% of their deposit base maturing out, that's a whole lot of deposits that have been stuck in a lower yielding account compared to what's offered right now. Even if just a tiny percent of them decide to pull their money, it's a problem, especially for banks that already have liquidity issues but on top of that what morgan stanley says is that it will put pressure on them to increase yields on normal accounts as well which some of them can't afford to do whatsoever because their net interest income is all that's keeping them afloat keeping them alive as their lending businesses have slowed dramatically one of them is bank ozk with 38 percent of their deposit base and remember this is one of the banks that moody's just put on a negative watch list last week likewise ally financial they have a whole host of issues and was also put on negative watch by moody's take a look at this piece on yahoo finance two days ago about allied it's titled another thing for banks to worry about credit card delinquencies they specifically highlight ally bank listen to this they write the return of student loan repayments in october could also make financial matters worse for some consumers forcing them to pull back on their spending in other areas such as credit card repayments loan losses from credit cards and auto loans are the big issue that certain banks have to now worry about the way that other banks worry about commercial real estate because of this bove downgraded capital one which relies heavily on credit card income he did the same to online bank ally financial which has a lot of auto loans and by the way uh, capital one is also on this list right here at 15 percent of their deposit base having their cds mature this year look this is all coming at the same time when these banks are writing less and less loans their bread and butter folks that's how they earn revenue unlike the big banks who have hundreds or even thousands in some cases streams of different income or different income streams these smaller banks and the regional banks are starving no loans equal no money all right, if you enjoyed this video, got something out of it, press the like button. If you didn't, that's all right too. Press the dislike button. Either way, I appreciate you watching.